That's really nice. Well, we're very happy to be here to play for you tonight. We're them crooked vultures, all right?
Merci, merci. This is called Dead and Fred. This song is called Scumbag Blues.
Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Dave Grohl. I like him a lot, too. I love you, man. <laughs> uh, and on guitar, Mr. Alan Johan. Very sexy man as well. You know, this nameless beer is all right. John Paul Jones. Also a very handsome man. And I'm your host, I'm Joshua. It's good to see you. It's called New Fang. It's got a new fang. Première question, Dave, la première fois que tu as mentionné ce projet, c'était en 2005 dans Mojo. Alors, ton rêve est devenu réalité But I didn't mention it, I think, to either of these guys. No, I, never I didn't hear about it. about it till December of last year. <laughs> Four years later. <laughs> yeah. I was really busy. <laughs> John, as-tu été surpris par la proposition de ces deux mauvais garçons américains uh, Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was kind of uh, up for doing something anyway, because I'd, been, um, I'd spent a few months working with uh, Jimmy Page and Jason Bonham after the O2 thing. Uh, we were going to form another band, but everybody kept on calling it Led Zeppelin without Robert Plant, so we decided <laughs> it kind of fell apart. So, but I was ready to like do something, play some music, and I've been playing for quite a bit. And then Dave, you know, uh, came up to me and said, "I'm going to do something with with uh, Joshua here, and uh, would you be interested?" And I thought, "Hmm, yes, I mm. really would." Just, Just Dave, et Dave, vous êtes deux grands fans de Led Zepp. Vous vous sentiez comment lors de la première répétition? Jam for me that that I that I sort of felt like you know crack crack your knuckles and like okay this is getting serious now and and many of the ideas from that second jam ended up uh, becoming songs that were on the record and so for for me personally that second one was was like yeah. like yeah. what watch out you know here it comes you know you when know? you first approach a chick and you ask her to dance you kind of cross your fingers and. Hope she can fucking dance. You know? <laughs> Otherwise, you can dance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, just, just. As tu ressenti une certaine pression quand tu as dû créer les riffs pour nourrir cette super section rythmique? Uh, I think uh, the the similarity to Queens and this project is that we always pursue any idea that we all agree is good, regardless of where it comes from. And because it's it's not where and how it's generated is less important than agreeing to pursue it and really turning it into something, making it become something. And, um, and so, so much of the process was focused on trying to better everything that, was, that looked like it had a shot. But there was no time to be like, I'm glad I brought that forward, you know? Yeah. There was no time for back padding with, with so much great stuff on the table, you know? 
Um, and so it was just a process. It started to be this process of making each other laugh almost with, with, you know, by the time we'd gotten to things like Caligula, it was a, it was almost about the absurdity of. It was doing like something. audacity. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. how dare you play something that <laughs> fucked up? Yeah. When when you hear, when you hear that's the dumbest riff I've ever heard, but everyone's smiling together, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. that you know you're onto something. Think you can out dumb me? <laughs> yeah. No. So, I would be Alors, comment les chansons writing. ont-elles été écrites? Uh, Vous avez beaucoup improvisé? We jammed a bit. I mean, you know, we usually needed something. When the first, when we first got together and plugged in, we just had nothing and we just jammed and it was great. But then, you know, you move on to the next step and you have something and you elaborate and make it grow into a song and, and um, you know, it would always take something to make it go. Yeah. And I think we were pretty good at realizing what was worth pursuing and what wasn't. Because there were a lot of, I mean, you know, yeah. there were a lot of things that we started but didn't really finish. There are a few things we recorded that didn't make it to the record, and I don't think there's any shortage of, of no. ideas within the three of us, you know? So it was just a matter of finding the right ones. Do you think that this spontaneity has contributed to the success of your union? Well, I think it definitely contributed to the sound and how, how the album it's, plays, it's you know? Fun, it's funny, it, this, it's actually a complex little situation. Uh, many things could go horribly wrong and the, 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 you know, or things go extremely well. And there's no middle ground for something like this. And, and I, I think we, it sort of started to feel like we were ch chasing it down, hunting it down a little bit. And, and we really hit a stride as we realized it was time to stop as well, which was, <laughs> which was another Amazing complex true. little situation. Do we stop or do we, or do we stay in here too long? Because yeah. for something like this, It feels like it could turn to vapor if you don't uh, get through it and, and, and you know, put out that first thing and go play. Because really the go actual goal is to kind of do a few shows. And uh, you start to realize the gravity of what you're saying when, let's go do a few shows. And then yeah. it's, it's, you start to understand the weight of what that really is, what that means. You know? C'était excitant d'aller dans une nouvelle direction totalement inédite, de faire quelque chose de complètement différent. Just trying out ideas and putting them together and writing and recording at the same time, more or less. Yeah. We we work on something and then record it and then work on something else and then go back to the first thing. Put some